people don't want to see uh, all of the politics. They've got enough politics with me and with everybody else. And they don't want to see it with football and sports on Sunday or whenever they happen to be watching. Donald Trump truly believes politics and sports shouldn't mix, rather only when he says so. I, I, I thought that was a, a, an absurd statement and uh, certainly it, it, it's ridiculous. Uh, the players have the right to uh, express their feelings about what they see happening in our country. And some of these things are very alarming. And uh, people have to talk about it and uh, discuss it. And hopefully, uh, you know, we, we, these are things that we can fix. But uh, unless there's some, some discussion, they won't get fixed. As always, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar hits the nail on the head. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. His Muslim ban? We've had Muslims here ever since the inception of uh, the colonies, the British colonies that were, that eventually became uh, the United States. Muslims have been part of and parcel of all this. And uh, the Comte de, de Lafayette had uh, Moroccan soldiers, both infantry and cavalry, that fought uh, with his contingent. I think people are attacking Islam because they don't understand it and they don't understand that uh, Muslims here in our country are very happy to be here and they respect our laws and traditions. The Hall of Famer shredded it as well. Their differing views have been consistent throughout time. I will tell you right now, uh, they don't look like Indians to me. They don't look like Indians to me, sir. Thank God that's not the test of whether or not people have rights in this country or not, whether or not they pass your look test. Depends whether, yeah. And they don't look like the Indians. Now, maybe we say politically correct or not politically correct. They don't look like Indians to me. If you're in a racist society uh, and you're being discriminated against, it's up to you to do something for yourself. If you live in a racist society, you naturally have to react to racism if you are, if you are attacked. Uh, if you're going to do something about it, you do something about it on the basis of your race. We don't uh, catch hell because we're uh, Christians. We catch hell because we're black. Which would result in this. That he is the greatest fighter and winner that you will ever meet. Rush Limbaugh, thank you. I am proud to announce tonight that you will be receiving our country's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Trump would give the Presidential Medal of Freedom to Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> Kareem Abdul-Jabbar would receive it from Barack Obama. It's fun. I love it. I love it. We having a good time? USA! USA! In the good old days, this doesn't happen because they used to treat them very, very rough. And when they protested once, you know, they would not do it again so easily. What do these rallies remind Kareem of? The contempt that uh, he has manifest uh, with regard to minority people, I think, is uh, more or less a nostalgia for the way things were in the 50s and 60s, when uh, all the people in charge of everything, well, the majority of them, the overwhelming majority of them, were uh, from uh, Europe. And yeah. uh, now that's not the same. So I think uh, there, there's some nostalgia there for a, a, a time when things uh, were more to his liking. Uh, look at my African-American over here. Look at him. Just absolutely pitiful. I'm Michael Jordan, and I'm here with Hillary. I said that because I know that uh, Donald Trump couldn't tell the difference. People don't want to see... Uh, all of the politics, they've got enough politics with me and with everybody else. And they don't want to see it with football and sports on Sunday or whenever they happen to be watching. Of course, but only when Trump wants them intertwined. Watch. I think sports are a, a pleasant distraction, but uh, certainly uh, reality reaches into all aspects of life. And sports is part of that also. So you, you can't can't entirely separate it. You have to uh, be reasonable and uh, deal with it when it when it's appropriate. I think it's very disrespectful to our country. I think it's very, very disrespectful to our flag. When you get on your knee and you don't respect the American flag or the anthem, that's not being treated with respect. I don't think uh, that the people who are doing this during the, the national anthem are trying to insult our country. They, they're trying to uh, provoke people's conscience to understand that uh, things aren't right. And... Uh, 
there's a very serious situation that needs to be dealt with. You know, that, that is the way that the legal justice system and the police uh, treat black Americans. There, there, there's an issue there that has been a problem, and we, we need to deal with it. But they shouldn't be protesting on the sidelines during a football game, especially when they're making $10 million a year for something that they'd be doing anyway for free if they weren't in the league or the NFL or in the NBA. An absurd statement, but one we can't be surprised with considering the source. I, I remember um, in my own case, right after Dr. King was assassinated, I was involved in a demonstration on UCLA's campus. And people came up to me while I was standing there and said, hey, you're going into the NBA. What are you complaining about? You're going to have the opportunity to make a lot of money. And the, the two issues do not relate. Uh, you know, what I was protesting about the uh, assassination of Dr. King was, was quite valid, whether or not I was going to have an NBA career. And uh, people have to uh, get their heads around that because uh, whatever they might say, those were the facts. Kareem easily debunks another Trump fallacy, being too good at a sport or too wealthy to protest. Going to the White House is considered a great honor for a championship team. Steph Curry is hesitating, therefore invitation is withdrawn. I thought that was a great way for them to use their platform to show their uh, disapproval of uh, Mr. C Mr. Trump's uh, activities, uh, some of the things he said, uh, his embrace of the Nazi party and white supremacists, uh, I, I would be very alarmed if I were going to go see someone who had those attitudes. So I, I don't blame the, the warriors at all. And it's hard to uh, it's hard to disinvite somebody after they've already said that they're not coming. <laughs> it's good. You have to stand proudly for the national anthem. Well, you shouldn't be playing. You shouldn't be there. Maybe you shouldn't be in the country. Bill Bradley certainly didn't uh, pay attention to that edict. Um, Tom McMillan, uh, another former NBA player who's uh, run for office uh, and had plenty to say about uh, our political situation. Uh, the fact that we have a, a certain um, profession does not mean that we can't have opinions on very important issues that are being discussed nationally. And, you know, whoever suggested that LeBron uh, keep quiet, they, they didn't know what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. Discrimination is a result of fear. Those who think Americans scare easily enough to abandon our country's ideals in exchange for a false sense of security underestimate our resolve. To them, we say only this, not here, not ever. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. But to pick one group and just say that their problem they're, they are the problem. It's, uh, it's a lie, and it's trying to uh, market in fear. Yeah. And uh, making people afraid is not going to do anything to make our country better. That NFL owners don't want to pick them up because they don't want to get a nasty tweet from Donald Trump. Do you believe that? Um, let's look at what happened to Colin Kaepernick, uh, for example. He was doing a peaceful... Uh, demonstration about the fact that so many black Americans were dying at the hands of police for no good reason, unarmed people. You've been very critical of Donald Trump, not only in the book, but in other essays you've written, and he's attacked you yes, yeah. uh, for it. In fact, I want to show you, viewers, the nasty gram he sent you after you wrote an editorial critical of him. Uh, Dear Kareem, now I know why the press always treated you so badly they couldn't stand you. The fact is that you don't have a clue about life and what has to be done to make America great again. Best wishes, Donald Trump. Uh, what was your reaction when you received that note? Oh, I basically crumbled it up. Uh, you know, this is what you would expect from somebody with uh, that type of ego and uh, someone who was so uh, narcissistic and feel so self-important that uh, his view... Uh, seems to mean a whole lot to him, you know, but uh, it's something 
uh, if, if I am that thin skinned, then I can't write. I think when it is all said and done with a lot of NBA players and even athletes across sports, they will look at their career and they will look at the career of Kareem Abdul Jabbar, not just as one of the NBA's top scorers, second leading scorer ever, but they will see his activism. They will see his columns. They will see him being a noteworthy author. And I do believe that there will be some regret for not speaking up and using their platform the way that Kareem did. This is a guy who sat out of the Olympics because he didn't agree with what was going on. This is a guy who was at the Cleveland Summit with Bill Russell and Muhammad Ali. This is a guy who, when converting to the Muslim faith, had to answer question after question after question after question because of the dumb American position of, well, he must be violent. I see all these quotes from Kareem from the 60s and the 70s and 80s. And yet it seems like nothing has changed, nothing. And we still keep fighting. The best way to do it though is with unity. And some of the quotes that Kareem has given have been fantastic on the subject of American politics, but it just goes to show leaders in their fields, the contrasting differences between what is right and what is wrong. If you have any story suggestions for us, if you think we missed anything, if there is something on the local level that you would like us to cover, I'll throw up the graphic, get at me on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok, send me a note. My messages are open and I look forward to hearing from all of you. If we create this superstar class of these uh, like multi-millionaire students wandering around, I mean, what does that do to all the rest of the kids who just want to play for the love of the game? I've got a son named Cabral, he's nine years old. He is a great soccer player. And you know why he plays? For the love of the game. Do you think he would be a better player if at the end of every game he got more cookies and more snacks than the other kids because he was a great player? Uh, what, what happened to the love of the game? Van Jones is an individual who just doesn't see the bigger picture at times. The people that want to play for the love of the game can, can do that. There are intramural leagues that they can play in. The people that want to play competitively against other schools, I think they deserve to get some remuneration from what, from what they create for the school. The school makes a lot of money. You got coaches in this country that are making like several million dollars a year. And they're, they're not supposed to be uh, amateurs, but the people who are actually going out there and going to practice every day, they're supposed to be amateurs. I, I, the, the hypocrisy is, is too blatant and obvious uh, to ignore, man. <laughs> NBA Hall of Famer Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, however, like many must do, fact-check Jones into oblivion. Where's this money even gonna come from to, to, to pay these superstar athletes? We, you're talking about you know, the NCAA, that's a, a not-for-profit, isn't it? Uh, it no, it, it's a lot of profit going on there. Uh, I told you, the, the, the president of the NCAA made $1.7 million. Well, that seems like a lot. That's, that's <laughs> a lot of money. And it, it's, it's not, this, this isn't equitable. Yeah. And the whole idea is that, that the people who are generating this revenue should get some of it. I'm not saying that they should get it all, but they should get some of it and allow all of the schools to share. I, I think revenue sharing is also something that has to be part of all of it. I think the love of the game can continue, but what needs to be dealt with is the fact that all this money is... The, the, the whole college system is awash in all this money, and they and purposely keep the people who are making this money from getting their hands on any but, of it. But what, what, what would you, would you be mad so if... So many of them come from poor circumstances and could use it for could, a number of things, but they, but they don't get to do it.